These are the most rampant queries I get regularly from chicken farmers, especially the improved Kenyaji farmers. I have read my birds to perfection, but they started laying very late, as late as seven months. Others will say their birds are not gaining weight as expected despite adequate feeding. All the above concerns lead to immense losses by farmers who always find themselves helpless. Ferment feels your pain. You could be possibly rearing a wrong generation of chicken unknowingly. Ever heard of the terms F1, F2, or even F3? I will avoid being very technical on this to ensure you understand today's topic that is breaking havoc among smallholder farmers in Kenya and across Africa. Inbreeding and negative crossbreeding in chicken is rendering the poultry venture profitless. There is a genuine need for timely intervention by the relevant breeding and policy regulators. The term F1 refers to the first filial generation offsprings from a specific cross between two distinct parent lines or breeds. The F1s are usually superior and exhibit hybrid vigor and improved productivity in terms of high growth rate due to their high feed conversion efficiency. They are prolific egg producers and have high resistance to diseases. On the other hand, F2 refers to the second filial generation which is as a result of breeding the F1 individuals. The F2s are less superior to the F1s in terms of productivity. Most of them exhibit slow growth rates and reduced egg production. They are mostly produced by non-certified hatcheries and farmers. There is an urgent need for regulation. Some farmers go as far as breeding the F2s to produce the F3s, thus further diluting the productivity of the chicken. Ensure you question the source of your day-old chicks. For commercial production where inputs are highly costed with an expectation of profitability, F2 and F3 chicks are not recommended as they are less productive, hence fetching low margins. Policy and market regulators should protect farmers from falling prey to inferior generations of chicken. This is where the involvement of experts pays off. The non-certified farmers hatching F2 and F3 chicks should be regulated so that there is a clear information and farmers dealing with subsistence farming become their targets. F2 do well in subsistence production. Let me put this discussion of F1 and F2 into a context analogy that you can relate. Personally, I come from a region in Kenya that does commercial maize farming. Every season we buy certified seeds to ensure high yields. We do not use the harvested maize or seeds for the new season. Why do you also want to breed F1 chicken to F2 and expect excellent production? Reflect on that. Do you want to splash your hard-earned money or retirement benefits down the drain? Then keep on buying Dale chicks from every Tom, Dick and Harry. I may sound brutal, but that's the reality. For commercial farming, farmers are urged to avoid F2 and F3 chicken. They lack consistency and vigor like the F1 hybrids. This leads to unpredictable growth, lower egg production, and higher disease risks. I hope you found this information very valuable to you as a poultry farmer, and we can keep interacting in the comment section. For more valuable insights on livestock production, subscribe to this channel. Reach out for consultancy services.